Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Miss Faye and this is my world. Today's topic is empaths must learn to say no. Empaths must learn to say the word no. Before we get started, I'd like to say welcome. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to all the new viewers, the new subscribers, and welcome to you who have been with me from the beginning. I really appreciate you. Now, I did pull a video and we have a letter. So let's watch the short video. Then we're going to read this letter and dive right into this topic. Impasse, you must learn to say no. Here we go. I am flattered, but I don't think it's the best fit for me right now. Thank you for thinking of me, but I'm unable to commit to that right now. I appreciate the opportunity, but I need to prioritize my own needs right now. I'm sorry, but I won't be able to make it this time. I hope you understand. I'd love to help, but I'm already stretched pretty thin. Is there any other way that we can support each other? I appreciate your offer, but I think it's best for me to focus on my own well-being at this time. Okay, let's dive right into this letter. I have two questions. Please give me advice. I'm 41 years old. I have never been protected or provided for by my father. At age 37, I stopped trying to have a relationship with him. And I'll go years without talking to him. And I don't feel bad about it. Well, <laughs> if that's working for you, Okay, he has never been there and it angers me to know he's still not trying at all to have a relationship with me or his grandkids. It should not surprise you. If he never tried to have a relationship with you, why would he try to have a relationship with you now, but now that you have children? It's nothing wrong with you. All right? At all. And this is what you need to look at. The issue is with him. Okay? All right. Am I wrong for having buried him mentally and emotionally? He failed me and I can't get over it and no longer desire to have a relationship with him. No, I think you're right. I think you should walk away from it. I don't think that you should feel emotional about it. You know, I realize that, um, you know, every young girl wants to have a relationship with the father. But if the father is no good, and I say if the father is not a good provider or protector, then that's what I mean, no good, then you don't need to have a relationship with him. He'll only drag you down. And you don't want your children to have a relationship with him either. If he wasn't good to you, he's not going to be good to your kids. All right? So I think you did the right, right thing is to walk away from him and leave it alone. Okay? Also, I have a brother who has never been a protector or provider. Instead, has always used me for his benefit while knowing I'm an empath and hating to say no. Okay, all right, here we go. Your brother is your brother. He's not your man and he's not your father. So he's not really responsible for you. You know, it would be wonderful if, you know, if brothers protected their sisters. You know, that would be fantastic, you know. But sometimes it just doesn't work like that, you know. But it's really not their responsibility, you see. Of course, you know, if you have brothers, you're at least looking for them to protect you. If not, provide for you, but protect you. But, you know, it's, it depends on a lot of things. Your father's no good. You know, uh, and I assume that your father wasn't around. Did your brother grow up with your father? Did your brother grow up with you and your mom 
and he just grew up doing his thing. <laughs> you see, yeah, it's a lot of reasons why your brother is the way that he is. All right. But still, you need to remember, empath, that it has nothing to do with you. And whatever your brother, your father, anybody does to you, it's the way that you handle the situation of how it's going to affect your energy. The way that you receive it. Okay? Not what other people do because you can't, you can't, uh, you have no control over what other people are going to do or say to you or whatever. But you can control your own reactions to it. And that's what's important. Okay? Alright, so he keeps asking you for things. Because he knows you're an empath. When I tell him no, he'll ask over and over again until I say yes or get aggressive and shout no. Well, at least you can get no out. At, le at least that. You know, growing up, uh, I'm an empath too. And, and, and I can understand this because I hated to tell anybody no. Really. And, you know, that was a a problem for me for a very long time, especially until I got on my spiritual path. You know, I bend over backwards to try to make things work with people. When when they didn't want it to work, they didn't care one way or the other. Until I can finally say, listen, I've done my best, I'm done. You see? And if people ask me for something that makes me uncomfortable to deliver, I say no. I say no, when before, what I would do is find a way to deliver it anyway, because I hated to say no. Okay, and uh, to tell you the truth, uh, when I was with the narcissist, he got over on me a number of times, because I hated to say no. Hey, just, it's something in the empath, because the empath, care so much for people and you feel their emotions and you don't want to feel that something that you said hurt another person or something that you said made another person feel some sort of way you see but other people they don't care how you feel but the empath has these deep feelings but empath listen being an empath is a gift it is a gift that you can read other people's emotions. It's just that you need to learn how to control and use your gift. This is a gift from the divine. It's not a curse. Okay? And once you learn how to use it to enhance your life, you'll be a whole lot happier. Okay? And you won't look at this gift like a burden. It's not a burden at all. Okay. But yeah, I'm glad to, to hear that you have to yell no before your brother gets the message. But at least you can get it out. All right. Let's see what else you say. In December, I completely cut him off. And I felt a huge relief from him. Always needing a favor or to borrow money and laying down all his baggage on me. Right. 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 He knew that you 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 were there. That's, that's an empath. An empath has that kind of energy that makes people want to come and lay their burdens down. That's, that's something that empaths will find that people will want to come and, and be around you because of your energy your nurturing encouraging energy people want to be around that you see and they will come and you know lay their baggage right down we recently reconnected and immediately every week he asked to borrow money and it pisses me off why why did you reconnect with this <laughs> I did a video, Never Go Back. Maybe you didn't see that video. Ne never go back. You, you can't go back. 
when you find out who people are, why do you go back? You think they change with time? No, they don't. No, they don't. Now, they'll tell you all sorts of things. They'll tell you that they change and things are going to be different. But it never is. People don't change like that. Okay? So, uh, that was a mistake for you to go back. And now he's wanting money from you. And it pisses you off because you are a single mom that works hard. While he has a two income household bringing in double the amount of income that I am. And he asking you for money. Well, he just using you. He's just using you. It's up to you to say no. No. Yeah, he he is definitely just taking advantage of you because he has figured out that you don't like to say no or that you won't say no. And if he begs you enough, you won't say no. You'll give in to give it to him. That's why he's doing you like that. Exactly. Maybe, you know what? Maybe you should flip, flip the tables and start asking him for money. Just, just borrow some, you know, a substantial amount that you know you don't need. But what you're going to do is see if he'll loan you the money. And then after a while, just give him back the same money. Because this way, he won't be so quick to think that you just got money to be shelling out if you come to him to borrow money. Maybe he'll leave you alone with the borrowing money part. You understand? They just feel like you got it like that. And why not? And you won't say no. That's why he's doing that. So yeah, borrow money from him. Flip it. See how that works. He never asks how I'm doing. Just asks for money. And I've had enough. Lately, my attitude has been that I don't care about being close to my family. Not that they're using you. You don't need to be close to them. If they just look at you like a money bag, no, you, you, <laughs> you don't need to be close to them. Not at all, because they have nothing good for you. Nothing at all. They, you know, they just use you and probably talk about you behind your back. You understand? No, mm-mm, mm-mm. You don't need this. And he never asks how you doing, because I don't care how you doing. He flat out don't care. That's why he's never asked. Think about it now. Think about it. And see, empath, see, I've been in the same situation being an empath. You do these things because you're trying to fit in with your family. But a lot of times, empaths don't fit in. You have a different energy that just does not fit in with everybody. See, it... Uh, it took me a long time to come to that realization. In fact, I didn't come to it until I got on my spiritual spiritual path. Then these things became clear to me. But an empath, because you have a special gift of being an empath, you are putting out a certain frequency that that is a welcoming frequency, but maybe it's a frequency that irritates some negative frequencies. Okay, we call it irritating uh, other folks' demons. They, they don't want you around, really. You know, now they, they'll use you, but they don't really want you around. You know, it was the same, it was the same thing with in my family because I was uh, a rebel in a very religious family. <laughs> A oh, very religious family. I'm the rebel. Well, you know, the family, you know, they didn't really care for me. I was always talking against whatever their teachings was and all of that. But when it came time to be entertained or they would like to have a, a gathering, I guess who they call me. They wanted, they wanted to be in my presence. They wanted to have it at my house. Things like that. You understand how they do? They, they, they want to use you because you have that energy. 
They know that they can come to you and have a good time because of the energy you are putting out. And many times their energy is toxic. But when they come around you and that good feeling, it makes them feel great. You see? So they're just used and abuse you or whatever. But that doesn't mean that they're going to, when they leave you, that they care about you. Mine didn't. <laughs> Mine never did. You see? But being an empath, we are giving people. And we are happy to give. And it's not a transactional giving either. It's an unconditional love giving. It's just, that's part, that's the gift. Unconditional love giving. Okay? And everybody doesn't have that. They don't. You see? But there are people who would take advantage of that. And empaths, once you understand who you really are, the gift that you really have, this will help you to understand your life and help you to enjoy your life more. Okay? All right. Let's go on down uh, with this letter. Yeah. Um, don't, don't get upset about how much your brother makes. You know, because, you know, the things that I did for people, you know, the same people that I entertained had triple times what I had. <laughs> Triple times and nobody offered, you know, can I chip in, can I buy, can nothing. You understand? But, you know, it, it just happens like that. You know, toxic people, they do toxic things. You can't expect toxic people to come and do the right thing because they're toxic. Okay? And if you choose to entertain toxic people, this is what you're going to get. They are coming to take from you. Empaths. You understand what I'm saying? When you entertain toxic people, they're coming to take from you, not to give. To take. All right? As long as you understand that, then your feelings shouldn't be hurt or you should not feel upset or anything when these things happen. When you know that this is, this is why they come to you. Okay? All right. Okay. You say about your family that, you know, that you're tired. You just about had enough of being close to your family. And I don't find them beneficial in my life in any way. I have two daughters and I have created a family for them. Well, then be happy with you and your daughters. That's good enough. You don't need those other folks. Uh-uh. You know, I, uh, my family... I. I am kind of separated from them, especially the only uh, real, I guess, a connection or a liaison or whatever you want to call it, that kind of kept me in the mix was when my parents were still alive. Now that they passed, you know, I don't need to be bothered with that. Okay. All right. Here we go. One last thing. I'm also tired of feeling forced to participate in this man's Holidays such as Mother's Day, Father's Day, Valentine's Day, Christmas, Thanksgiving. I'm at the point where I refuse to call or text anyone during these days. Well, that's your uh, prerogative. For real. Nobody's making you participate in any of these days. Now, your families, if your family is big on these holidays... Yeah, they're going to kick up a fuss. But the thing about it is, once you have ignored these holidays for a few times, after a while, they won't expect you to respond to any of the holidays anymore. All right, and if they ask you, just tell them that you, you know what, you've decided that uh, you, you're not going to participate in these man-made holidays anymore. You have the right to do that. Do that. There's no problem. All right, and, and that is my, my, my take on that. Just because your family does, doesn't mean you have to. Same thing, you know, I came from a, like I said, you know, my dad was a bishop, had a very large following. I came from a long line of ministers, a real long line. You understand? So it, it was the family business to be a preacher, okay? So, um, yeah, I, I understand how uh, a lot of it works. 
and how your family expects you to do certain things. And because of my father's position, when I was growing up, yeah, well, I had to, you know, <laughs> shut my mouth. You know, but you know, understand? But um, no, being an empath, you need to learn to say no. And I'm telling you, I had a real hard time uh, growing up because, well, as a matter of fact, my father was a narcissist, so he was always asking me for something. And I was the, I was the poor one. I was the scapegoat, the poor one that had nothing in the family. Nothing. You see, and plus I was the oldest, you see. So um, he would come and, you know, just come to my little dinky apartment out of his big fine home. And uh, look around and he may see this radio or whatever he saw, this camera. What You know, I'd, I'd like to have that. We could use that at the church. And he would grab it and take it to the church. He never offered to, you know, how, let me give you some money. You know, here I am, was a single parent, single mother with, with, with three kids. And <laughs> didn't mean nothing to him. You understand, people? I was a giver. Hate to say no. Although I could, you know, understand? How could I, I if I wanted that, that item again, I had to go find the money to purchase it again. Because, now he didn't come in the house to try to find nothing that was broke down. He had to be something kind of new. But that was, you understand, that's his, his mindset. And uh, empaths, when you understand that certain people have that mindset, then you have to guard and be able, and this is going to take strength, say, no, you can't have that. No, no. And, and as a matter of fact, if you have a hard time saying no out your mouth, get yourself a stamp, a stamp that had big no on it. And when people ask you, just, just, uh -huh, just stamp no, 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 <laughs> until you get used to it. I know I made it a little funny there, but I hope that you got the message. In past, you must learn to say no or people will run all over you. And it will never stop. Never stop. And you and it will make your life miserable trying to fulfill the wishes of others when nobody would care about you. I hope that you understand this message today. And I really hope that it helps. Now, uh, those of you who may have a question that you would like for me to answer, my email address is in the description. And if you're looking for your uh, affirmation for today, the link is also in the description. And any of you empaths who don't have your cap, they are available in my online store and you'll find the link in the description. I want to thank you so much for your comments and your letters. And a very special thank you for those who leave a donation. I really appreciate all of you. I wish you all the very best. And I really hope to see you next time.